Hi, this is Brittany Ellick with another episode of Red Raider TV. I'm here with Coach Christy Curry, who's on her fifth year of coaching here at Texas Tech. Coach, it's a pleasure being here with you today. Fun to be here with you, too. Now, tell us a little bit about the new players on your team who we're going to see out on the court Sunday, November 7th, game opener. Who's new on the team? Oh, we've got four incoming freshmen, a uh, really good class. I think Kelsey Baker is a top 100 player out of Mesquite. I'm really excited about her. She's more of a Charles Barkley type strong power <laughs> forward that's very versatile. Um, Antesia Brown, a guard out of Clovis, that has been the biggest surprise of the freshman class as far as how quickly she's taken off with her basketball IQ and uh, love her energy, her athleticism. We have a local product, Haley Snyder at 6'6". You can't coach that size yeah. and what a tremendous addition she's going to be. Continues to get better with each day. And then a post player out of Albuquerque, Sandia named Ebony Walker who we're really excited about her future. She's 6'2", can really run the floor and very athletic, will fit well into the Big 12. We have a couple more new faces. Uh, last year, Chantal Nobles was out for the year with an Achilles tear, and she is back and healthy. And boy, we're so much better with her. Love her tenacity and her toughness inside. And uh, Casey Morris, a little transfer from Cal, really has a chance to be a special player. I think we'll compete along with Tina Wickett, our other newcomer, as newcomer of the year possibly in the league. Both of these young ladies really going to be difference makers for us. Tina is at 6'4 and very versatile. So a lot of new faces that really give us a new look. Three faces, though, that understand the system, spend a year with us, and then four brand new faces. Sounds like you have a lot of height and talent to the team this year. We do. We're excited. We're a lot bigger. We go eight deep in the post, and so that gives you about ten more fouls you can use as well. Well, we're excited to watch. Now, tell us a little bit about the returning players coming. Is there anybody we should look out for? Well, I think, you know, I'm really excited about the commitment they made in the offseason. Each and every one of them have really worked hard, and you see definite differences in their body. Um, they've really worked on their conditioning and uh, redefining that level, and I'm really proud of them. Monique Smalls is so much stronger physically. She's really added some muscle. You can tell in transition. Um, her decision making is is so improved. I'm really excited about her and the leadership she's going to provide at the point guard spot. And excited about all of them. I don't want to leave anybody out, but China Brown on the perimeter, Mary Bokenkamp on the perimeter, Marissa Ashen inside. Um, you know, our sophomore class really gives us a dimension as far as I looked out there, we had a scrimmage on Saturday and we had five sophomores on the floor. So that's exciting for us. And our junior class with Kiara Mallard and Jordan Barncastle, Lindy Kimbrough. Um, you know, we only have one senior on the squad, so I don't mean to leave anybody out, but we really feel like that they can all contribute and they all bring something unique to the team this year. We love our depth. Well, speaking about contributing, do you all have a special motto that you guys go by? You know, this year we've talked a lot in the offseason about investing. And uh, Casey Morris actually designed our little screen for their summer workout gear, and um, she's quite the artist. And, um, you know, really investing. What you put into something is what you're going to get back. Invest in the classroom. Invest in your conditioning. Invest in your eating habits. Invest in your sleeping habits. Sleeping habits. And, you know, when you invest, good things are going to happen. These kids have really invested in the offseason, and I can see the difference this fall. Now you all did also took a trip to Canada this summer. Tell us a little bit about that. Did you do anything fun up there? How was the trip as far as the team and the girls? You know, the, this type of trip, we were so excited about the fact that, um, you know, we get to take our five, four freshmen for the first time. It's a new NCAA rule. First time freshmen have ever been allowed to go. So we had 10 practices with our upperclassmen, and then five of those included our freshmen. So really gave us a jump start to the season, X's and O's wise. But more importantly, I think chemistry wise, it really helped our team learn how to travel together, spend time together, get to know each other and you know basketball the game is so much more important than 94 feet it's what happens off the floor and um, we're excited because we love the fact that we got to see a different part of the country Whistler Vancouver Victoria it was gorgeous and our kids were really appreciative of the educational opportunity not only the athletic part but the educational part of it as well was really special a different scenery than Lubbock for sure <laughs> it was you know we got to go well watching um, we got to uh, go zip lining uh, do a lot of different oh, things fun. that normally you can't probably do in Lubbock so it was a beautiful part of the country and um, some place that maybe some of these kids will never have a chance to see again now here in Lubbock you and your team and your coaches have started the community action plan what is that for people who do not know you know we wanted to take our fall and see how we could get out in the community um, you know everyone talks about we want to have a relationship with these kids we want to get to know them and so we tried to make ourselves as available as much as possible to get out and give back from going out to the South Plains Fair to going out to um, a safe treat at the mall on October the 30th to getting out at football games to going out to different events in the community just trying to give back and give people a chance to come out and say hi and to meet us and spend some time with us. Now, um, you've had the opportunity to work with some great basketball coaches from over at Purdue, Jean, Jean Katie, Katie, I'm sorry, Katie, at Purdue and Bob Knight here at Texas Tech. And a recent um, 
coach who passed away, John Wooden, at 99 years old. What was your experience with him? You know, Coach Wooden was a Purdue graduate, so during my time at Purdue, I got the opportunity to take my team out to that area a couple of times, and so our staff got to spend some time with Coach Wooden, and um, also our team did. So just it's a privilege and an honor to get to know him because he's made such an impact on my career. He talks a lot about family, how important his own children were to him, and then how important his players were. And it's more about life lessons. You know, the wins and losses will take care of themselves as long as you do things right along the way. And, you know, as we've built this program, back you know at the end of the day we know we're doing things the right way and you eventually know it has to pay off and you know that's something that I learned from coach Wooden and the fact that I got to go out and spend time at his home and um, you know he stayed in touch he's been quite an influence on my career especially with the Purdue ties um, coach Katie coach Knight what an honor and a privilege to coach in the same building with both of those men and they've had so much impact on so many young men and so many universities and the, the things that they've done beyond basketball to give back has really touched me and made me realize it's so much more than just coaching that you you have a huge responsibility to represent something bigger than yourself and both of those guys really have represented the right way. Now uh, you have a track record of having academic wise the players who excel in the classroom. How do you stress that also often on the court? Well back in the day when I was a young um, head coach I, you know you take different approaches but you try to get them to understand it's about life after basketball and especially being a female our pro careers don't go on as long as the men and so having that degree to fall back on is important and, you know so much you do if, if we're not going to study we're not going to take academics as a priority we're not going to practice and we're not going to play and so I've started taking practice time away but uh, I don't have to do that a lot at Tech I mean we have a tremendous support staff uh, Marlon our academic advisor Felicia Martin the job they do in the Marsha Sharp leadership or in the Marsha Sharp building uh, really make academics a priority we're blessed here to have a wonderful facility and our kids really make academics a priority now, before each game, do you have a ritual that you do? Maybe do you wear the um, same shirt every game, or do you not wash your socks? No, you know, I actually try to wear a different outfit every game of the year. Um, so that's probably the only ritual I have, but uh, not really anything. I'm not very superstitious. Um, I do have to have a little caffeine before we get going. Now, you have a unique situation. Your husband's in the passenger seat to you at the games being your assistant coach and I know that you've done that before at previous schools how does that work out you know it works out great you know there are high highs and low lows in this bill you know this business and very few in between so it's great to have someone that can really understand and we support each other um, you know we do this together um, we feel like our basketball program is a family just like our two little girls at home we've got 15 big girls at the office so we take a lot of pride in working together it's like any other business that folks run together Work now, together. Um, you mentioned you have two little girls, Kelsey and Kendall, and um, how do they, do they love coming to the practice, do they come to all the games, are you going to stress basketball on them, or how is that going to work? You know, I want that to be something they decide that they want to do. Right now, they love a little bit of everything, and we just try to support them, and um, you know, whether or not they decide to play is, is going to be up to them. They don't, they don't listen to me very well right <laughs> now, so, uh, but they are both playing basketball at the Premier League this fall and having a great time with it, and I just want them to have fun with it. Well, good. Now we're going to do something a little bit fun called Pick One. We did one with your players. So I'm going to give you two options and you're going to pick one. Okay. Okay. Facebook or Twitter? Twitter. Now, do you actually do your own Twitter or do you have someone do it for I you? actually do my own Twitter, but I do have my staff that supports me and gives me some ideas every once in a while. But most of the time here lately, it's been my own Twittering. You heard out here on Red Raider TV, you're actually listening to Coach Curry when she Twitters. Now, pizza or hamburgers? Pizza. Pizza. Pizza, definitely. The beach or the mountains? The beach. The beach, even though you went to Canada. And saw yeah, even though I went to Canada, um, <laughs> but I grew up going to the beach um, down in South Florida, so um, being from Louisiana, I'm more beach oriented than the mountains. But I do love the here. mountains. No, we don't get much of that. <laughs> okay, coffee or tea, since you have to have a little bit of caffeine? Um, definitely iced tea. Iced tea. Unsweetened yeah. with one sweet and low, so. Disney or Nickelodeon? Oh, definitely Disney. Yeah. Big Disney fan. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune or The Price is Right? The Price is Right. I definitely <laughs> grew up watching The Price is Right. And uh, how about heels or flats? Um, you know, it depends on the occasion, so I would have to say a little bit of both, but um, it's definitely easier to coach in flats. Do you coach in flats during the games? Um, I do. I'll wear some heels sometime, but uh, it, it definitely makes it a little bit easier, feet a little bit less sore. Definitely. So now, um, let's go back to who do you look up to? Who's your role model? Um, I definitely have to say, you know, my granddad. I mean, he coached and taught for 40 plus years. My mom and dad both coached and, coached and taught. So I've been blessed to have some great role models with my family. And um, so my parents, you know, obviously, um, I love Coach Wooden. I've looked up to him for a long time. And then Coach Leon Barmore, having the opportunity to work for him at Louisiana Tech. So I've had been blessed with some great role models in my life as far as X's and O's and their philosophy and also just as people and what they believe in. Um, now, 
What's your best memory from playing basketball in high school? Do you remember anything of how many points you scored? With the um, most you I, I think scored? definitely just winning a district championship, you know, yeah. and playing for my mom. There are so many moments that were really hard during that time. Playing for your parents is not an easy thing to do, but looking back on it, you know, you wouldn't have traded it for anything in the world. So I feel blessed to have had the opportunity to play for her and, um, you know, still stay in touch with, with all my high school buddies, and that's a lot of fun. Well, Haley Schneider also played for her mother here in Lubbock, so I guess you two can relate to that. We definitely can. You know, it's <laughs> fun hearing Haley talk about her mom and, um, um, you know, Jill is such a such a great lady. I mean, it reminds me a lot of my mom as far as how she balances her children and her job and have a lot of respect for them and how they handle things on and off the court. Right. Okay, well now, um, having ESPN Women's Basketball Analyst, Ann Myers quoted you saying that you were, one of the first word that comes to you when she thinks about you is class. How does that make you feel? Well, I think that's, wow, what a compliment coming from her. Um, you know, you want to do everything the right way. Um, you know, it needs to be God, family, books, and basketball in my mind and prioritize things every day. And for her to say that, it means a lot, especially coming from her. You know, she's someone that I definitely look up to, and her family is a priority. She's been through a lot of personal tragedy, and she definitely has things in perspective. So there's mutual respect there. She's class as well. Now to wrap things up, what would you be doing if you weren't here at Texas Tech Coaching? You know, I, um, at first, you know, um, thinking there was nothing I wanted to do but coach and teach and, you know, each and every day. But I think now, you know, having children, Lord, I'd love to have four or five kids and just be a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> I absolutely love spending time with my kids and seeing them grow every day. Well, your daughters are lucky to have a mother like you who's so versatile. <laughs> Well, thank you for tuning in for another episode of Red Raider TV. To check out more on Coach Curry or Lady Raiders basketball, go to GoLadyRaiders.com. Thank you.